Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Neil Foley, and I'm the Applications Engineer here at RISE. Today, I'm going to be talking about prototyping with RISE in particular and additive manufacturing in general, and some of the uh, value that can come from using these technologies and also some of the best practices and best approaches to get the most out of them when using them for uh, product development and prototyping. So first we'll look at generally why is additive manufacturing valuable in the prototyping process. So some of the main values include its ability to lower costs and lower lead times for vo low volume production compared to other methods of manufacturing. So for example, if one were to use traditional methods of subtractive manufacturing, then uh, it, would also, it would often involve um, more waste material and sometimes longer lead times due to the labor involved in either programming or performing the manufacturing process. Whereas with additive manufacturing, it's often possible to simply create the file and then send that file right over to a machine and the machine can prepare the uh, prototyped product by itself. Another value of these technologies is the ease of revision. So whereas with other technologies, some an extreme example would be uh, injection molding. If you want to make a minor change to the design, it can involve quite a bit of effort. It may involve starting over again at the beginning of that process that involves higher costs and higher lead times. Whereas with additive manufacturing, a minor change to the file is enough for the 3D printer to um, immediately begin pr producing that new product in its proper form. And a final benefit is that there is little or no additional cost for producing complex geometries. And this goes hand in hand with the uh, previous point, wherein for traditional manufacturing methods, it can be quite costly to produce complex surfaces or intricate tunnels and other kinds of geometry. Whereas with additive manufacturing, because material is being added instead of removed, it can produce very complex geometries like the organic surface that you see on this part with holes passing all through it, holes that aren't uh, standard shapes and it can do this without any additional cost because um, the process of additive manufacturing does not rely on the types of simple geometries that are used in uh, tooling for traditional manufacturing methods. So ultimately this last line here just describes the most important factors to uh, achieving a successful uh, prototyping or product development process. So these are expediting the development cycle. So that would be being able to get the product from uh, drafting to the market as quickly as possible. Also reducing costs, uh, self-explanatory and improving the resulting pro uh, product. So this is trying to not only get the product out the door, but make sure that it's as good as it can possibly be. So there's naturally a balance between these things. Uh, getting a product to be developed faster and better is often more costly, whereas trying to get it out uh, faster without uh, spending any more money on it could cause a hit to um, the quality of the product. So all of these are things that we try to improve using additive manufacturing and other technologies that allow us to uh, gain an improvement in the prototyping process. So I'll talk a bit more about these later when we get into some of the specific applications. So now I wanted to talk a bit about RISE's technology in particular. So we have a patented technology that we call augmented polymer deposition. And this is a technology that combines material extrusion of thermoplastics with material jetting of functional inks through the types of print heads that you would find on a 2D printer. 
So we combine these into a hybrid technology. And what that allows us to do is that between each layer of extruded thermoplastic, we can jet different functional links to achieve a variety of effects. So normally how this will work is that first support is extruded as uh, thermoplastic through the material extrusion head. Once the support has achieved uh, the proper shape um, for each cross section, then release ink will be applied to those places on the support where it will be transitioning into model material. Then model material, uh, which is the same material as the support, will then be uh, extruded on top of that and in between each layer of extruded thermoplastic model, we can jet different types of uh, functional inks, for example, um, color inks, which can achieve um, the full spectrum of color on a single part. So we have two types of printers. There is the RISE 1 that has release ink for easily removing support, as well as blue marking ink. And our newer uh, 3D printer is the X-RISE, and that has the same thing, but it also has, uh, well, it has CMYK colored inks so that you can produce a full spectrum of color instead of just the blue. So for the rest of this presentation, I'm going to be talking about some of the different benefits of using this technology in the prototyping process and how it can offer improvements over comparable technologies in additive manufacturing. So this will include a discussion of using the markup technology to organize development and revisions. We'll also talk about producing and testing designs faster, as well as simultaneous iteration. Then we'll look at design visualization with full color. And finally, we'll look at a few special applications of RISE. So first of all, the technology to apply marking ink between layers allows us to apply images and text onto the surfaces of parts. And this can be on any surface of the part. And as the part is printed, marking ink will be applied onto each layer or along the edge of each layer to create the desired effect. So this can help to document metadata about parts on the parts themselves so that, for example, you could include part numbers, revision numbers, configuration IDs, um, dimensions or tolerances, and finally a QR code that can link to either a similar set of uh, metadata or to a PDM system or to a secure URL or uh, many other things. The QR code is very versatile. So the benefit of this is that rather than producing parts that are not marked up, each of them would have just been a blank surface and trying to differentiate among them based on uh, either recognizing the differences in their features just by looking at them or by trying to color code them with different materials or something along those lines, you can be much more precise and have better organization for a much higher number of iterations by actually marking the parts with the metadata as it prints like this. So one of the benefits of this is that rather than having a bucket full of old prototypes that either need sticky notes attached to them or something like that, and being unable to differentiate among different generations of part and things like that, you can easily trace the variations in each prototype. Uh, even if they're all mixed together and disorganized, you can easily pick it out and recognize which pieces uh, come from which revision iteration, as well as uh, the specific differences among them, if those are things that you choose to document. So the next thing I wanted to discuss is the way in which uh, RISE technology in particular allows you to produce and test designs faster. So the main uh, components of our technology that enable this include the fact that we use release ink to 
separate uh, support and model structures. And this allows you to remove support quite easily, often by hand. And because of this, you're able to spend very little time post-processing parts. Oftentimes, once you get off, once you get a part off of the printer, it can take just a few seconds uh, or maybe a few minutes to get it ready to actually test it out. And because of this, for smaller parts, it's sometimes possible to iterate through them multiple times in a single day. So this can drastically speed up the uh, prototyping process. Another value is that RISE was recently the first and so far only 3D printer to be awarded the UL2904 certification for excellence in um, low emissions. And this is a certificate uh, specifically for 3D printers. And it essentially uh, specifies that RISE has very uh, little emission of um, volatile organic compounds. So it's very safe to be in the same room as a RISE 3D printer, even a confined room, something with the door shut, a cubicle, anything uh, closed off. Whereas with many other 3D printing technologies, it can be uh, much more harmful to be in such close proximity in a closed off space. So because of this, uh, which is um, an effect related to the material properties of our uh, thermoplastic rhizium, because of this, we're able to bring our printers closer to the actual developers. You can have it right in the uh, cubicles of the engineers rather than needing to make trips to the lab or communicate with uh, different personnel around the company. You can simply have the people who are doing the design uh, print it out right near their desk and test it out immediately. So this is just one more way of reducing the friction between designing a part and having it ready to test out. And finally, one last thing that uh, sort of combines the current and previous slides together is simultaneous iteration. And this is something I'll discuss on the next slide that has a very powerful effect on how quickly you can uh, prototype new products. So the idea of simultaneous iteration is that because the marking ink uh, enables one to apply all sorts of different information onto the surface of a part, this makes it possible to print very similar parts in large quantities without mixing up which part is which and what are the differences among them. So because of this, you can print uh, not only a single iteration, uh, but multiple iterations at once. And because of that, um, because of the existing effects that allow you to uh, post-process and test parts so quickly, this can uh, have a very powerful effect on how quickly you can test many new ideas um, and ultimately find the best fit for the product you're trying to develop. So some of the images we have here include uh, iterating through multiple different geometries in a single print. And this would allow you to, um, with even more types of geometries, you could test uh, many at once and mark them up with uh, version numbers and things like that, and very quickly identify the best approach uh, in terms of geometry. And then the next image shows iterating through multiple design prototypes. In this case, it's a few different products. It could also be a few different uh, versions of the same product, a few different visual versions based on the types of packaging perhaps that you'd want to use on it. And this has a similar effect of being able to test out many different design approaches in a single print. And then finally, in the last image, um, this sort of all comes together into an idea that I would call evolutionary iteration, where you can take a single uh, starting point for a part and make a large variety of minor tweaks to it and then uh, print them all at once and be able to test which combination of those minor tweaks is ideal. And then maybe you could take that new version of the part 
uh, that has been identified as the best from that print and use that as the new starting point and make another variety of tweaks. So this will allow you to iterate through many different possibilities in a single print and crucially the marking ink capability allows you to make sure that you know which physical part that you've printed corresponds to which of the digital versions that you have in your system. So you wouldn't have to go back and uh, go through a long process to figure out which of these uh, physical versions corresponds to which correct digital version that you want to then work off of. So now a sort of special case would be being able to uh, prototype parts in full color using our new x technology. And this has a few specific uh, useful features for use in prototyping. One of course would be prototyping uh, products and packages that require full color to get the full visual effect and make sure that everything looks the way that it was intended. Another useful thing would be color differentiated annotations. So this could be similar to what's been discussed on previous slides where you want to iterate through um, multiple design approaches at once or multiple design approaches not at once but um, using a similar geometry and being able to color code different features uh, such as the holes that are shown in the part in the middle here allows you to more easily visually track uh, what different features are related to one another and um, for example if you wanted to uh, suppress certain holes from this part so that fewer holes were produced and then you wanted to test it in that form then um, it would be easier to identify which parts are which and which have which parts have which set of features that you need or that you would like to work off of um, by color coding them as opposed to just marking them up with text which is uh, a bit slower to uh, communicate information. And then the final example we have here is FEA simulation visualization and this is sort of a placeholder for a larger idea whereas FEA simulation visualization allows you to uh, view in a physical part what you would have been viewing in uh, software it allows you to not only uh, visually hold or physically hold and move around the part and be able to see where the most significant stresses or pressures and things like that are on a part it also allows you to deliver it to uh, places and people that would not have access to that data in software and um, can help communicate more effectively with uh, less technical um, people on uh, that sort of topic but in addition to FEA simulation, being able to use a full range of colors is just valuable in general for being able to communicate a large amount of information in a fairly small amount of space. Um, so this is really only limited by your imagination, but the combination of these few things should give you an idea. The FEA simulation along with the approach of color coding different features in order to uh, visually uh, demonstrate which of them belong to different categories. So finally, I wanted to discuss a few special applications for prototyping with RISE. So one of these is our special ability to prototype injection molds. And the reason that uh, Rhizium is such a good material for prototyping injection molds is because it has a low surface energy and a low chemical reactivity and because of this you can use uh, you can cure materials like silicone or urethane against rhizium without it getting stuck to the material and because of that it's possible to uh, produce parts and easily remove them and then use the molds again um, and the molds won't degrade over time you don't have to worry about them uh, gradually leaching out into the material or anything like that so it's very effective for being able to produce molds that uh, work properly and if the intention is to eventually produce 
a mold using tradi traditional manufacturing methods, so a mold produced in metal, for example, then this is a very cost-effective way to test out different geometries rather than going with the much more expensive approach of prototyping in the uh, metal material itself and testing on actual injection molding uh, systems. So a final application that is particularly useful for prototyping with RISE is the ability to securely annotate prototypes and this is all using the QR code markup technology. So a markup, a QR code can link to any URL on the internet and because of this it has a virtually unlimited versatility. So one of the particularly useful things about this is that you can link your QR code to a secure database that requires authentication in order to view the data. So uh, I've been talking about on each part maybe uh, marking it up with a variety of relevant metadata but if for example you're working on uh, some sort of classified project and uh, cannot put the metadata about each uh, part onto the prototype itself uh, without risking a, some sort of security breach then uh, this sort of approach with authenticated uh, links through QR codes uh, can allow anyone who has the prototype and is authorized to view the data, it will allow them to easily access that data without making it available to anyone who only has access to the part itself. So that's all I have for today's webinar. Thank you all again for joining us today. I'm going to be sticking around for a few minutes to answer any questions you may have. If you do have a question, please just type it into the chat box at the bottom of your GoToMeeting window, and I will answer those as they come. Uh, otherwise, thank you again for joining us today, and please have a nice day. All right, so I did get one question. Someone asked how the, um, how the inks work with the different materials we use. Um, so, not sure exactly what's meant by this question, but um, I think could be due to a discussion earlier um, when I tripped up a little bit maybe. So back on, let me go back a few slides actually. We go. So on this slide, um, I just wanted to clarify that the support and the model material that we use is the same material, and the way that we differentiate between support structures and model structures is by jetting release ink on top of the support um, or on the bottom of it to make sure that once the part is completed, the support can be uh, easily separate the support structure can be easily separated from the model structure because there's that uh, loose interface created between them by the release ink um, and then all of the other inks all of the marking inks are applied on the interior of the uh, model structure so uh, we have currently a few different types of materials we have rhizium one which is the standard material used with the RISE-1 machine. And then we have Rhizium Carbon, which can also be used with the RISE-1. And Rhizium Carbon is a stiffer material um, and it has a few other benefits. And then our most recent material is Rhizium ST, which is being released with the X-RISE and is uh, very similar to Rhizium 1, but it's specially formulated to uh, be effective when used with uh, the full range of inks that we apply to it, the full range of uh, colored inks. So hopefully that answers the question. And I don't see any other questions at this time, so I just want to say uh, once again, thank you all for joining us today. If you 
do think of any questions either on this topic or another, you can always contact me at applications at rise3d.com. And other than that, uh, please have a nice day.